All right, so I was given the um, topic of land use in the courts, and I've titled this Some Important Utah Court Opinions That County Planners Should Know. I know that not all of you are county planners, um, so I, I should have said uh, people involved with county planning, but it's just too long. So um, I'm going to go over some, some cases. It's not going to be exhaustive, but it's going to be some cases over on some issues that I think come up frequently in my discussions with uh, county county attorneys and county planners um, about planning issues in the counties. Some of you might know some of these, so if you do, I hope this is a good reminder for you. If you don't, then I think this will be very helpful. I'm not going to talk about any federal cases, Supreme Court, uh, United States Supreme Court cases. For example, I'm going to focus on Utah cases. And I'm also, I, I've tried to select cases that will be interesting to uh, the planning side of things. There's a lot of land use cases that are interesting to attorneys um, because they deal with things like um, standing or they deal with uh, other sort of technical legal issues that I don't think really relate well to uh, everyday planning situations. So I'm going to try to limit it to that. And another thing you should know is that the law, CLUDMA, is constantly changing. Every year, there are new amendments to it. Um, and so some of these cases, I've tried to pick cases that have to stay in power uh, through the years, but oftentimes what will happen is you have an important case come down from the Court of Appeals or the Utah Supreme Court, and whichever party loses that case uh, heads to the legislature and tries to get the law changed. And oftentimes, they're successful. And so you'll see this sort of back and forth oftentimes uh, in the statutes. Uh, and particularly blood law, blood, 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 uh, the municipal uh, land use code. And uh, so um, some, of, some of the cases I'll talk about today, in fact, uh, that happened. And uh, the rules announced by the court were actually codified uh, and they appear in the land use statute now. So let me, I'm just going to go through some cases. I'm going to give you sort of the background, what happened in the case, and then try to sum up for you sort of the rule that came out of that case uh, that you should be aware of. So the first case I'm going to talk about is a case called Arnell. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If someone knows it's pronounced differently, let me know. It could be Arnold for all I know, but I'm going to call it Arnell versus Salt Lake County. This was a 2005 case from the Utah Court of Appeals, and it dealt with regulatory takings. Now, there are uh, three general categories of, of takings. You have physical takings, where the government comes in and physically uh, takes possession of your property. You have regulatory takings, and regulatory takings occur when the government passes uh, some sort of law that has the effect of depriving you of the economic value of your property. And then you finally have the third category, which is uh, development exactions. And we're going to talk a little bit about those later on. But this case, Arnell uh, talks about regulatory takings. This is what happened in that case. Arnell buys a lot up near uh, Brighton Ski Resort. And at the time when he, he bought it, he thought he could build a house on the lot. Uh, the guy he bought it from also thought he could build a house on the lot, but neither of them took uh, the time to look at the ordinances covering the lot to discover whether they actually could build on the lot. Big problems happen all the time, right? So uh, Ar 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 Arnell goes, he applies for a building permit, the county says, uh, wait a second, we have this slope ordinance. And the ordinance says, uh, it's called the, the Foothills and Canyons Overlay Zone, or FCAUSE. That's not important. Uh, but they say you cannot build on slopes that have more than a 30% grade. Now this is a problem for Arnell because his lot has a 40 to 50% grade. And he paid the money on the lot thinking he could build on it. So the price for the lot was the price for a buildable lot. So he applies for a variance. Um, he asks the, the Board of Adjustment to give him a variance and let him build anyway. Um, they say no. So then he uh, files a takings petition with the county commission. The Salt Lake County has uh, uh, instituted a, a commission on, on uh, that here's takings claims, or takings complaints would be a better way to put it. Um, this is a, under the statute, it's voluntary. I don't know of 
any other case really where someone has gone through this, uh, you can bring a takings claim directly under the Utah Constitution. You don't have to go through this process. But uh, I think this is unusual that we did go through the process. Um, the uh, county commission appointed hearing officer. And the hearing officer is interesting. All of his findings were in favor of Arnell, uh, finding that he felt like he could actually make this work on his lot. But he said, uh, I'm going to recommend denial because I don't think Arnell has any standing. Here we go, we're talking about standing now. Any standing to, uh, to, to bring this application because, or this complaint because he bought the lot after the ordinance had already been passed. So he should have known about it. Um, the county uh, even uh, delayed, county com the commission delayed giving him time to come up with some specific data. They wanted specific data saying, how feasible is it to build on this lot? And he never came up with that. He said, you know, it's going to be too expensive. I don't have any guarantee that I'm going to be able to build. It's going to cost me thousands of dollars. I'm not going to do it. Um, now, before the county commission made their decision, but after the hearing officer came out with his uh, decision, a United States Supreme Court takings case came out called uh, Palazzolo. And Palazzolo, one of it said many things, but one of the things it said was, when you're talking about a regulatory takings, it doesn't matter if you uh, purchase the property after the ordinance has already been passed, you can still bring a takings claim uh, challenging that ordinance. And so this basically, uh, through the hearing uh, officer's decision, uh, out the window because that was the basis of his decision. So he writes a letter and he says, Palazzolo just came out. My basis for saying you should deny no longer exists. So uh, the result is you should, you should go ahead and give him a variance. Or, or the result is... ...pay thousand dollars in fire fees. And the court said, you know what, you're right. Um, there's been no change in your demand for fire service fees here from when before you had the density determination when you, after you had the density determination. Therefore, I'm going to order a refund of all the fire service fees you've paid over the last four years. Uh, we're talking about a seven-figure number here. So um, I hope that none of your uh, fire service districts have a similar uh, mechanism. If they do, please take a look at it. Um, the problem with the special service district that we have up in Wasatch County is that both of us are named as defendants in the lawsuit. The court has found that we are the same entity, essentially. The judgment of refund is not issued only against the fire district, but it has also been issued against the county. We are jointly liable with the, with the fire district for refunding those monies. This sort of defeats the whole purpose of having special service districts. It's probably going to go up on appeal. Stay tuned, but it's something that you should be aware of, that this is, this is developing. Um, that's uh, the end of my presentation. I do want to give you my phone number. I'll give you my, uh, my direct phone line. As Johnny said, we have the land use hotline. If you have any questions, give me a call. It's free, um, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, share with you my thoughts. I hope that they're helpful. Um, the number is 801-524-9331. That's 801-524-9331. My name is Bart Coons, and I'd be happy to talk with you. Thanks.